Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are going to be going over the Nintendo Virtual Boy. And uh, for those of you that don't know, this was probably Nintendo's biggest console failure. Um, this is a uh, 3D uh, kind of console, 32-bit, that Nintendo made around the time of the N64. It was only out for about nine months. There's only about 14 games. And, you know, I never really expected to become a huge fan of the Virtual Boy, but I, I am. <laughs> so I have the entire North American library. Um, I also have a, a consoleized version of, of the system, which I've made a video about in the past. Um, but one thing I've never discussed really in detail on the channel is how to repair these. So most of the time when you get a Virtual Boy, um, you may have some lines missing from one of the eyes or both of the eyes, or sometimes they're so bad that you can't see anything out of it, but you hear sounds, so you know it's running. This is a very, very common problem. It's going to affect every single Virtual Boy out there, and it has to do with the glue that they use to attach a flex cable to the left and right lenses. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart and how to service these so that they will last for a very long time. Okay, let's get to it. All right, so first I'm just going to walk you through disassembly of the console, and it's not as bad as it might appear. So what you're going to need is a game bit screwdriver just like this here. These are readily available and really cheap on Amazon or eBay or whatever. Um, and so you'll find that there are eight game bit screws located all around the console, so you just need to take those out. You'll see that there are four over here. These four actually hold this panel, so you don't actually have to take those out. You can just leave those alone. Once you've got it out, I find that sometimes these are really sticky, like it's like the, you know, they're really hard to take apart. This one I've already opened, so it's fine. But um, if you find that to be the case, if you put your thumb or your fingers on these two black tabs and hold down while you push up, it helps to get everything disconnected. Okay, so the culprits that create all the problems are, are these two lenses right over here. And I'm gonna zoom in in more detail so you guys can take a look. But there's one on the left side and on the right side. And there's adhesive that holds this flex cable in. And over time this weakens. And when it does, you start losing lines and eventually you lose everything. So I usually approach this by taking care of one eye at a time. So I'm gonna, go ahead and do this one right here. And so you just pull the flex cable out and then there's two Phillips screws uh, that you just need to remove. Those are the exact same ones as they use on the Game Boy. So those are super, super common. All right, so I'm gonna take it out and we're gonna switch to the microscope and we're gonna take a look at this thing. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the lens and now I've taped it down to this uh, bench over here. And you can see I've just used regular electrical tape on uh, the flex cable and on the PCB and that just holds everything down and makes sure that nothing is moving while we do the work that we're going to do. So now that that's all set, we're going to need a few things. Uh, first off is that we're going to need to have some flux. And so that's just the regular no clean flux that I always use. And then I've switched my tip on my iron. So normally I use a bigger chisel tip, but here you can see I'm using a flat um, fine t chisel tip uh, that's ideal for just going from one uh, conductor to the next and making sure everything um, gets soldered properly. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some flux and get started. All right, so somehow I lost the beginning part of this footage, but you can see I've already worked on half of this ribbon cable, um, but it doesn't really matter because I can still demonstrate what it is that is needed to do in order to get this thing working. So you can see that I've added a lot of flux to the board, and I'm just going and making up and down motions with the chisel tip. You can see there's a lot of extra solder on the tip, and that's fine because there's lots of flux there as well, and that prevents bridges from taking place. Under no circumstances should you move the tip side to side, because if you do, you might actually move the little conductor that's in the flex cable. So you can see I'm just going from right to left, and that's because I'm left-handed. You might want to go in the opposite direction. And every time things start going low on the flux, I always top it off and add some more. And you're trying to add solder both to um, the contact points on the PCB and also to each of those little conductors that are in the flex cable. Um, so this is just my first pass. It's really hard to tell if you've got s solid, stable connections at first. And so you just have to do it by eye and you really need a microscope or some kind of magnification for this because it just makes the job much easier. You can tell whether you've moved the cable or not or if you've made a solid connection. But um, yeah, that's about it. You basically just need to make these gentle up and down movements with your hand and go from one side to the next and just make sure that all of them are, are tinned with solder and that you're making a connection between both points.
Okay, so now everything is done. And so the next step in the process is to go ahead and clear out all of that melted glue and plastic and whatever. Because as you can see, there's a lot of that um, original glue that got melted by the soldering iron. And I always go back and I use like something fine. Like in this case, you can see I'm using the point of an old pair of tweezers that I have. And I go um, from one conductor to the next and I get rid of all that gunk that is sitting in between the conductors. The reason why I do this is because sometimes there might be a bridge hiding underneath all that crap, and you're not going to see it because there's all that old glue there. Never mind the fact that you just want it gone anyway because it's all melted away and it's gross, and you just don't want to leave that behind on the board. So I go line by line, and I use that tip of my tweezers, but really you could use anything kind of fine-pointed like that, and you just go and you clear out all the gunk. Okay, so now that all the gunk is clear, what I'm going to do is follow up with uh, some Q-tips and some alcohol, and we're going to go ahead and just um, get the last of it off, because the alcohol gets rid of it right away. And once you've done that, you should inspect all of your connections and make sure that they're solid. You can even test them with a multimeter if you really want to. Normally I don't bother though, normally I just go ahead and test it in the console, and if there's a problem, you'll see it right away, and it's something that you can fix. Um, by just reflowing uh, certain certain pins, but uh, but yeah, you can just see I'm just getting it all cleaned up, and once that's done, it really looks good. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the second lens, and we'll see what happens after that. All right, so now that the repair is finished, um, there's really only one or two things left to do. So one thing that I always do when I repair these lenses is, you can see over here there's this like whitish stuff over here. This is actually epoxy. So at the factory, they use this epoxy to attach the flex cable to the PCB. And sometimes I find lenses where this epoxy no longer is sticking, and so this can just flop around very easily, and I don't think that's really safe in terms of, you know, having it work in the long term. So just to kind of, you know, protect it, what I always like to do is take a little bit of Kapton tape and just add it to that area just to protect it a little bit better so that we don't have any problems in the future. So I'm going to take a little piece of Kapton tape and it doesn't have to be really perfect, but you just want to line it up and put it down and just kind of cover this whole area and then this just helps to keep everything the way it's supposed to be. Okay, so this lens is finished, so I'm going to go ahead and install them and test things out and we'll see how things are looking. Alright, so I've got the camera zoomed right into one of the eyepieces of the Virtual Boy, so you guys can see that this one does seem to be working again. So uh, what I do to test out the lenses is I use a very specific game. I use Mario Clash. Um, the reason why I pick Mario Clash is because it goes through a couple of different graphics modes and during the introduction sequence you see a red screen for pretty much the entire thing. So it's great to see if there are still some issues with either one or both of your lenses. And normally I test one lens at a time just to rule out any possible issues. So let's go ahead and just test it out. So you might be seeing some kind of diagonal refresh rate thing. That's just a product of the camera. That's not happening in real life here. Um, but yeah, you can see that everything seems to be looking good. There aren't any dead pixels or vertical lines or horizontal lines that are, are missing here. Normally it's horizontal lines, sorry about that. Um, if you do have some, that's not a big deal. That probably just means that you need to go back and rework some of those conductors and some of those pads. Sometimes you just didn't expose enough of the conductor or maybe it's just not making good contact. And so just going back and revisiting the lens is usually all that it takes to get things working again. Occasionally you might have issues with contact with the socket on the motherboard. And if that happens, you can actually add a little bit of capped on tape to the top of the flex cable and make it a little bit thicker so the contact is a little bit better. Um, but in this case, everything seems to be great. All of the, uh, both lenses are working. Everything looks good. 
So I call this one a success. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Um, if you like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And then, of course, if you have consoles that you need repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, well, thanks again, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.